there you're listening to what's near today a kids and family podcast about current events shaping our world this is sangeeta your host from india and in every episode i'm joined by a super curious child who loves to talk about one interesting news story and the news stories we cover could be about sports politics business or like in today's episode we're going to be discussing how scientists have come up with an idea of using cockroaches to help people who are trapped under buildings or rubble after an earthquake so if you're wondering is this lady on this podcast a little bit mad well just hold that thought you might discover the answer to this question if i'm truly senile by the end of this episode but just bear with me because there is a super super enthusiastic 8 year old who joins me on this episode hi i am naira maheshwari and i am excited to turn 8 years old in just 20 days i'm a student of children's academy thakur complex in mumbai i am an avid reader and i re- i am currently reading the biography of walt disney Walt Disney designed uh, Mickey Mouse when he was going on a train ride. Wow, that's such an interesting inspiration. He probably saw all the funny things outside the window of his train, and he got inspired. Maybe he was bored and just started to make something. So when when you're going on a train ride, how do you keep yourself entertained? <laughs> Same way, like drawing something or just looking out the window for different oh. things. So maybe even Naira will come up with a cartoon picture just like Walt Disney did, no? Yeah. What would you like to create? Would it also be a mouse or something else? I would like to design a rat named. I've not um named it yet. Oh, you've not named it yet. That's fine. When you do come up with the name of that rat and the picture that you are going to design, will you share it with me? Yep. I'd love to put it up on our Instagram page. So, shall we begin this episode with a funny, silly quiz? So, yes. what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the names of three animals. I'd like to hear from you. what you would like to use this animal for animals or birds you know apart from the way people normally use them are you ready yes awesome number 1 parrot when i grow up and then the children don't listen to me i want to become a teacher so when the children don't listen to me i am going to put the parrot and he is going to repeat my sentences <laughs> So you will become a teacher, and when you get tired of repeating the line, yeah, you use a parrot. Just the way you can control your class. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant idea. Okay, second ant. When my sister does something to me, like she hits me, or she doesn't let me do my studies, I will get the ant to bite her. How old is your sister? Five. Ah. Oh. and you are the slightly evil older sibling who would like to traumatize the younger one with an ant biting her yeah that's kind yeah. of funny uh, she says give me a pencil or a, or do something like that and i'm like i'm thinking of the answer and she interrupts me in between yeah that is not done no especially when someone's interrupting your deep thought when you're 8 years old You shouldn't be asking. Someone shouldn't interrupt and ask you for a pen or a pencil. Yeah. What about a horse? Using too many vehicles for going to the same place is a cause of air, air pollution. So maybe rather than taking one one car, you can just take three people on a ride, and I'll get and I'll get to ride a horse as well. So. Wow. So the horse will be your new mode of car pulling. Mm. Yeah, and the kids would love to go to school if they had to go on a horse. Horse, right? yeah. Brilliant, Naira. I love all your ideas. So, 
we'll jump into today's story. And I know you've done a lot of reading and researching, and I think also watching some videos on YouTube about the topic. So yeah. the first thing is, do you want to describe this new cockroach cyborg that the Japanese scientists have invented? Yeah. So whenever there's an earthquake, the whole earth starts shaking. So uh, many things might fall down. These cockroaches, because they are fast and uh, they are very agile, so sci scientists have put the solar panels and they, they it is like a walkie-talkie and a remote control car and so they will control the cockroach and uh, the cockroach will tell them where in the rubble and debris where exactly a human is there. Is there also a camera attached to the cockroach? Yeah. So when the scientists are using their remote control and they are guiding the cockroach as to where to go under the debris, they can actually see whatever is trapped under. Whatever is that, how is this cockroach powered? How does it get the... I mean, at some point, the battery in your, in your remote control car will die, right? So how does the battery on the cockroach's camera and the walkie-talkie and all, how does that not die? The cockroach has a solar-powered cell on it. Do you know how thick this whole backpack on top of the cockroach is? Because what you're saying is it's pretty much like a backpack that is strapped on a cockroach, but it's really very light. Very it's light. a solar-powered cell and then... It has a tiny little camera also attached to it. You know, all in, how thick is this backpack? Do you know that? Um, not quite. The, this backpack is not really very thick. Can you, uh, if you want, just take one strand of your hair in your, between your two fingers. Just one strand, okay? Only one strand. Yeah. Have you touched it and felt it? Yeah, it is like nothing. It's almost like nothing, right? Yeah. The backpack on the cockroach is even thinner than that one strand of hair. Seriously? It's mind-boggling. Yeah. I, I cannot even imagine that. Yeah, I know. I agree. It really, it's very hard for us to imagine something that thin. Strapped on a cockroach because a cockroach is by itself a very light creature. Very light creature. So and you don't want to burden it with a heavy backpack. Heavy backpack. So they had to make a camera, a solar powered cell, and this whole walkie talkie business. All this had to be loaded on that thin a backpack. That's amazing, right? Yeah, and it reminds me of my um, experience that it is. Um, I, I go to school, so. Teachers are expecting me to carry a lot of textbooks and spirals. So, because I'm a human, I can carry that. Now, if I put that weight on a cockroach, it will die. Thankfully, cockroaches don't go to school. So, they haven't been trained to carry heavy backpacks yet. Correct. Do you know what kind of cockroach the uh, scientists have used for this? Yes. Particular? Yeah. The Madagascar species have been used for this um, cockroach, cockroach project. Why have they chosen the Madagascar species? Yeah, because they have chosen it because the other cockroaches are very tiny. And this Madagascar cockroach is big. It is the biggest species of cockroaches. And also, I believe the Madagascar cockroach is capable of turning itself, of flipping itself. Yeah. Have you seen a cockroach that lies on its back? Yeah. Is, will it be easily able to flip itself and stand upright? No. But the Madagascar cockroach... It has it, the ability to flip itself. Yeah, imagine if you go under an earthquake rubble and you can't flip itself, you'll be stuck there, no? Poor yeah. thing. So that's why they've used the Madagascar cockroach. Brilliant. So now I also know that you have read a little bit about another species of an animal that was used many years ago to help humans. Which species is that? Rats! Hero rats! Yeah, can you tell me about the hero rats? The hero rats are taught to scratch. 
touch the ground when they find a landmine. Landmine is a small weapon kind of thing and it's a bomb. It's a bomb. So okay. if anyone steps on it, there's a, there's a one fourth part outside and they have used leaves and all the other surroundings to uh, cover it so that it is not um, seen and there is a small safety pin that is a secure that acts like a security so when we remove that safety pin it is activated so that so then if anyone steps on it that bomb will blast When do people use landmines? People use landmines when they are in a war. There are 100 million landmines which are activated and unattended. That means they can blast anytime. Anytime, yeah, that's true. The continent with the most number of landmines is Africa. Yeah. But um, it is sad that Africa has also the most number of animals. So the animals also can get injured. So when people placed all these landmines during war, war is over. Now after the war is over, there may still be many landmines there. So people who are owners of that land or if it's forest area or an agricultural land, if you were a farmer, would you go inside your land and start growing crops there? No. Be very careful and, and if it becomes serious in my mind, then I would go away from there. If you are very scared, you would just go away from there? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So people who own land, they can't even grow their own crops, right? Yeah. So the governments in many of these countries, they try to send people and they slowly scar the land inch by inch with a small metal detector. Now, what is the solution with the super interesting solution? Do you want to talk about with the rats? Yeah, so the interesting solution, which is the interesting part of this episode, is that the hero rats have been trained to scratch the ground when they find a mine. It scratches the ground because it has a, a developed sense of smell. Thank you. That was a beautiful description of how the rat can sniff out the places where these landmines might potentially be there without the rats themselves getting harmed also. Right? Yeah. Then people who know how to deactivate the landmines will quickly rush to that spot. So the rats will clear out the landmine super fast and the farmers or the owners of the land can go ahead and can start using the land without any fear. Wow, I absolutely loved this, the, you know, researching about these rats and these cockroaches used in such a positive manner. That brings us to the next interesting part of today's episode. Quiz time! Let's see how well you listen. Question 1. Which continent has the largest number of landmines in the world? Africa. Question 2. How thick is the backpack on top of the cockroach? Is it thicker than my thumb finger or thinner than my thumb finger? It is very, very thin than your th thumb finger. It is just like a blade of hair. Next question. When Naira grows up, she wants to become a teacher. Which creature would she like to carry with her to class so that she doesn't have to repeat her lines? Parrot. Hey, it's Friday and we have a riddle for you from Naira. What is black and 
white and red all over but in today's episode i'm going to try and answer this riddle myself and i don't know if i'm going to be right is it a worm or an insect like a ladybird no when i get hurt on my head and i have black hair and white hair and a little bit of blood comes out <laughs> no no okay can you give me the answer the answer is a newspaper okay where's the red i know the newspaper is black ink the paper is white where's the red the red is a homophone so we read and the past tense of read is red Wow, that's such an interesting one. So the newspaper is black and white, and I read it all over. So it's yeah. red all over. Yeah. Wow, that's a very interesting riddle. Thank you so much, Naira. You're welcome. You know, with this, we wrap up this episode. How did you enjoy recording this? I enjoyed thoroughly. Before I let you go, Naira, would you like to recommend any episodes that you really enjoyed listening to on this channel? I would recommend the episode fifty-five, and it is about how cheetahs was brought back to India from Africa. You know, on our Prime Minister's birthday recently, all these cheetahs were finally flown over on a big aeroplane. I listened to that episode, and then I, at the same day, I went to my friend's house and saw it on television that okay. they were running, running very fast. So, when do you listen to the podcasts? I listen to them mostly at sleeping at. night and while getting up and doing all my routine like brushing and bathing so mom says that when you will listen and do it then you will do your work faster because then you will have to uh, then you will want to sit and listen to it because it is so interesting thank you so much naira And that brings us to the end of this episode. If you enjoyed listening to my banter with Naira, please do click the follow or subscribe button on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you're listening to. And please do leave us a rating and a review. That really helps us understand how much you enjoyed these episodes. And if you're like Naira, a curious child who'd like to come on this show and speak about one interesting news story. You can click on a link in the show notes below. Thanks for listening.